last, over the last few months, we've had two separate um, people tell us through friends of friends. Kind of a weird scenario. Uh, anyway, there's, we've had some haters, basically, is, is what's happened. And th there have been people from our past, firstly from, from Robin's um, childhood, then from my childhood we've had people who have seen how we're doing life, how we're living, how we're traveling, what we're doing, all this stuff. And th they refuse to believe that it's, that it's true, that it's legitimate, that, that it's all above board. And two of the comments have been that we are living a credit card lifestyle. Everything we do, everything that we go, every, all the stuff that we, that we buy is, is, all, is all on credit cards. Um, so to the person saying the, the, these kinds of things, you know, uh, you are absolutely right. You are absolutely right, we do. Everything I, I buy is uh, swiped on my credit card. Let's talk about why. When you're living off credit cards the smart way, it's all about the points. It's all about the points. Uh, I know that every dollar I spend on my Visa, I get half a point. Um, and every dollar I spend on my Amex, I get 1.5 points. Um, for these particular cards, for my particular approach, it's Qantas Frequent Flyer Points. Qantas is the airline I've chosen, and I chose these particular cards to collect points. Now, half a point per dollar on a Visa, and one and a half points per dollar on an Amex, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up. Right now you can see my balance is roughly 200,000 Qantas points, which isn't my peak because we just got back from a long trip where we flew first or business the entire way. And that used up a few points. Because the way I use my points is through flight upgrades. Let me give you an example from my recent trip. The Brisbane to LA leg or the Sydney to LA leg is, is, a, is a common route anyone on the east coast of Australia will know. It's, it's one of the two ways we can get into America. And these are the four classes you can choose from. What I've written here is the, is the price for each ticket. These are ballparks. Yes, they change throughout the year and they have sales. These are just general ballpark prices for each class. So starting with economy, if anyone has ever spent 12 hours on this leg in this part of the world, you've had a glimpse at what hell might be like. I try to avoid that like the plague. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible experience. For a little extra, Premium actually offers quite a sizable upgrade. The difference between here and here is what they're worlds apart. This is a definite uh, worst case scenario fallback. Uh, I like Premium, Premium's not bad. But business is where the value is at. This is the big daddy. The price between business and economy is usually about five to six times more, but it's about a hundred times better. Business is where the value is. And then there's first, which is usually double the price of business. But I gotta be honest, it's not twice as good as business. Um, business is where the value is at. Business is my recommendation. With this in mind, it's about getting smart about how you buy your tickets. I always buy premium, this is for my international legs, I buy premium and then upgrade to business with points. That's where the value is, and that's where you get the most bang for your buck for your Qantas points. The difference in price between business and premium is around about $2,600 a ticket. Now times that by two for the return trip, and then times that by two people, I basically just got given $10,000. And it didn't even put a dent in my points balance. Accumulating Qantas points is kind of like accumulating cash. It's kind of like a separate savings account that replenishes itself. I don't even have to think about it. I just use my credit card to, to buy stuff, to live. And this brings me to my first warning about credit cards. You've got to know your numbers. You have to know how to do the calculation to find out your numbers. My upgrade basically saved me $2,600 per ticket. When I divide that by the 45,000 points it cost me to get that upgrade, it works out to be about six cents per point. If you can redeem your points for six cents per point, you're doing really well. Remember, every time I use my Amex for every dollar I spend, I get one and a half Qantas points which we've worked out is worth six cents to me each. So every dollar I spend on my Amex, I'm basically getting nine cents back in the value of upgrades. That's kind of like a 9% discount on every single one of my purchases, if you look at it like that. So when the cashier at the store says that there's a 3% surcharge for using an Amex instead of a Visa, you have to know your numbers. You have to know if it's gonna be worth paying an extra 3% um, in, in the value of points. And it could be, depending on how you use your points. But you have to know the numbers, and it's elementary grade maths, basically. The second warning is that the competitive advantage that I'm getting from accumulating these points is only small, it's tiny, it's very slight. It's not a silver bullet. Silver bullets don't exist in my experience, at least I haven't found one yet. 
So if you get a credit card to accumulate points, and by way of having a credit card on you, you spend more money, it's immediately not worth having the credit card. If you can't be trusted with your spending, if you're a spendthrift, um, or if you're broke and you need the credit card to buy things that you can't really afford, don't get a credit card. It's not worth it. The points are not worth it. And then the final warning is that you have to pay the damn thing down. I can't believe how many people who have all this credit card debt racked up. How the hell did you get credit card debt? You get credit card debt by buying shit you can't afford. Don't buy things you can't afford. A credit card is not magic money that comes falls out of the sky. You have to pay it back. And if you don't pay it back in the first 55 days, you gotta buddy pay interest. And the interest rates aren't cheap either. They're not good interest rates. I completely pay down my cards every week. And by doing that, I don't pay interest, ever. I never pay interest on credit cards. Um, and on top of that, the money that I've spent on my credit cards throughout the week sits in interest-bearing accounts generating interest for me while I use other people's money to buy my stuff throughout the week. On top of the points, there's a bunch of other really good reasons to have one too. Um, when you buy something and it doesn't turn out to be how, what you expected or it breaks, you have a built-in insurance. Well, at least with my credit card you do. So I just call them up and say, this is crap, and then I get a, a charge back and then I get my money back. Whereas if I bought it with a debit card or if I bought it with a bank wire, you probably wouldn't get the money back. Another thing with my credit card is that I get in travel insurance. Just by way of ordering, booking my trips through my credit card with my credit card, accumulating more points, I get free travel insurance, which to me, because I travel a fair bit with Robin, it's worth about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a year to me. Just that alone is worth me having a credit card, let alone all this other stuff that I get from being smart with a credit card. One thing I will say is that my personal turnover of expenses is slightly higher than the average person's turnover, which allows me to accumulate points much faster. But having said that, there are a lot of things you can do to transfer all of your, your costs and all of your expenses to your credit card. So for example, you need to look into if you can pay your phone bills on credit card. There's services now springing up that allow you to pay your rent and your mortgage repayments on credit card. They act as like a, like a middleman and they take like a couple of percent. But like I said, if you've done the numbers and you can work out that a point is worth six cents to you and you can pay three cents for a surcharge, you're better off doing it. Um, it's all about knowing the numbers. You need to know your numbers so that you can empower yourself to make better decisions rather than just defaulting to societal stigmas. Don't go to credit card, it's bad. It's always going to be bad to get a credit card. Not necessarily. So to the people who are saying these things about Robin and I that the lifestyle is all fake because it's funded by credit cards, Half of what you're saying is true. It is all funded by credit cards. I use my credit card on as many things that I can possibly use a credit card for. And I do it because I'm accumulating hundreds of thousands of Qantas points every few months, which allows me to travel the world in business class and first class. I could be anywhere on the planet in three days for free with the amount of points that I've accumulated in the last few months. I do it because when I travel, I have free travel insurance. And I do it because every week when I have outgoing expenses, instead of giving my money away, it sits in interest-bearing accounts, making me money day and night. I use a credit card because it's smart. 